Good afternoon, folks. 2024 Advanced Higher Chemistry, my guesses. Please don't watch this um, if it's going to cause you any stress, although we are near the end of the exams this year. Um, these are not official SQA answers, and I can't guarantee their accuracy, so you can't use them to accurately predict your mark, I'm afraid, sorry. Um, also, because this is an educational channel, of course, I don't get any money out of my YouTube viewings. This is not for profit. Um, I'm going to enjoy this rum truffle from Katrina, and I'll be back to you in just a second. Right, I'm going to rip through these answers very quickly. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, that's the equation, so hydronium ions for this one. pH from the ionic product, that's equal to that. So you square it, and then you square root it, and then you take the negative log of it. Um, you get that. Uh, and it's a nice question, this one. I like this question. Sorry, my cup is in the way of the light. Um, I like this question. Uh, the weak versus strong properties, but they're both monoprotic. I might change the lighting. Just two seconds. Bit less shadowy? Bit less shadowy. They're both monoprotic, um, so therefore, the only thing's the same as the mass. Number 10. Uh, just a calculation. Straightforward calculation. I get that. As I said, could be wrong in these, of course. Could well be wrong. Certainly happened before. Uh, this one here, the reaction is feasible. That's the only thing you can work out from the ne negative delta G. Uh, that's B. It's quite tricky, that one, actually. Um, because it is... Oh, no, no, I forgot that one wrong. Hold on. Spontaneous formation of a snowflake. No, I haven't got it wrong. If the process is spontaneous, that means that... The increase in it, the entropy of the snowflake is increasing, which means the entropy of the surroundings must always do the opposite. So, no, I've got it, I think. We'll find out in August. Uh, this one here, this is a, quite a nasty one. It's a little bit of math, see, so really. The rate of a chemical reaction is actually the differentiation of this. So, it's the rate of change of concentration with respect to time. And this is changing by the same amount, but every time period. So, therefore, in fact, it's effectively has a rate of, it's not changing, so it's zero order for that one. If maths is not your strong suit, that might cause a bit of a headache. Which of the following could only represent an aldehyde? It's got to be the simplest version, as this person here has done. I don't know whose this is, actually, um, whose paper this is, but yeah, they've done it right. So it's A. Uh, propanoic acid would not be produced by the reaction of... It's an interesting one, this one. Uh, Fellings is not a powerful enough oxidising agent to turn that into propanoic acid. It's, it's, it's not great. I perhaps would have had one with a different number of carbons, so it definitely couldn't be produced. That's their call. Number 16. Uh, they are not correct. They can't both form hydrogen bonds because ethers can't. Simple. 17. Which the following reacts with both dilute hydrochloric. Um, I'm going to go with that because it's an amino acid. Amphoteric, I think, is the correct, I don't think, I know, amphoteric is the correct word. 18, both these reactions involve the formation of a carbocation. That's the only one they've got in common with each other. Um, problem solving, I, I came up with this, which matches up to B. So we're breaking that bond there. Sorry, breaking that bond there. Show some professionalism here. Sorry about the paper rustling noises. Uh, what's going on here? Correct for the substitution. It's electrophilic substitution, so these two are wrong. And uh, my favourite, nitrated things. Used to make stuff that goes bang. Um, 21. X and Y are isomers. That's the trans, because the bromines are on opposite sides of the ring. That's a cis. So just elimination. I get that one there. Uh, 22, I've got sneaky. Why have I got sneaky for 22? Um, oh, because there are two, t it just says stereoisomers in general. Um, that's both optical and geometric isomers. They're both forms of stereoisomers. So this one has a double bond and it has got a different, it's got different things on both sides of the double bonds. Uh, oh no. Ah. Hang on. No, I'm going to stand by my answer of four, because um, you can read write it this way, and we can flip that round. That gets the cis or the trans one. So there's two geometrics, and that carbon there is chiral, because there are um, four different things attached to it. 
none of these other carbons are chiral, so they're ch are chiral, sorry. Two opticals, two geometrics. I'm going to go with four. I'm doubting myself here because I did this a little last night. Uh, 23. That's a bit of a nasty one. It involves a lot of nuts and bolts knowledge about how NMR actually works. I did put it in my video. So um, it's protons, uh, not electrons. Uh, and uh, you actually produce the peaks when energy is emitted once they have flipped back um, to their ground state. Ah, um, oh, joy. Empirical formula. Um, I got that one, although I may well be wrong. Uh, I just used the ratio of, of sulfur to oxygen. Um, to work it out for that one. And our last one. This is quick run through. Um, I just isolated the fragment that was present in all of these and I reckoned it was A. And we're done. Tune back in for, part, uh, for the written part.